Hi guys, welcome back or welcome if you're new. My name is Kyra and I am a recovering beauty guru. What the heck does that mean? It means for the last six years, I bought anything and everything that I wanted. And now I'm trying to rein myself in, get some use on my products and project pan. And today is an update for my no pan left behind and project 10 uses i've combined these two projects into one video but let me know down below if you'd rather see separate videos for these each month before we get into it if you haven't already i would absolutely adore if you would subscribe because i have a ton of content that i cannot wait to share with you conscious consumerism using what i have how to make my makeup work for me so I would love if you want to subscribe, it is free, it helps me out, and it makes sure that you can find my future videos very easily, and Cooper says you should subscribe too. <laughs> Give me a coop. So let's go ahead and start with No Pan Left Behind. A couple of housekeeping things that I wanted to mention. I did start late. I just started last month in March, and also... I'm not going to be waiting for these updates to continue to roll things into the project. I have 69 eyeshadow palettes and I would really like to get through most of them this year. And if I'm waiting for once a month to roll in three to five palettes, I don't, I'm not going to get there. So I wanted to mention that. So I have rolled in new palettes, but we're going to talk about the ones that I introduced at last month's update. Two of my palettes are rolled in at random and one of my palettes is chosen by me. So the, for the first three palettes, my Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde was my choice. And then the Soul Tree and Patrick Ta were chosen randomly using my Tiny Decisions app. Also, I'm curious if you do this project, the No Pan Left Behind, how do you do it? If let's say you introduce a new palette into your collection and you do No Pan Left Behind it just on your own, testing it, doing looks with it, etc. Do you go ahead and go in and mark those palettes off for this project so that you're not working on them again? Or how do you do that? I'm just curious. Asking for a friend. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so the first palette that I had in this project is the Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde Palette. Such an amazing palette for spring. It looks like this. I did add a dip to a couple of shades in here and I really had a great time using this palette. I'll pop up a few looks throughout this video using some of the palettes. I'm going to try and keep better track of the looks for next update, but for now I have a few with each palette, I think. So I did finish this on March 19th and went ahead and rolled this out of the project. Next, I had my ABH Sultry palette in the project. I was really glad when this got rolled in because it's a palette that I kind of deem in my brain or my mind palace of makeup as a winter palette, even though it's really just a neutral palette with a pop of coral in it, but it is a palette that gets overlooked by me and my collection frequently. And so I was really glad to use this. And I have a tiny little new baby pan, unintentional, but amazing and exciting nonetheless. So I hit pan on that shade on March 19th. And then I did finish with this palette on March 23rd. One of my favorite looks was the last look that I did where I used the silver, the gray, and the black for my daughter's uh, Taylor Swift folklore themed party. I really had fun with this and I feel great about keeping it in my collection now. It's one that I've always kind of had in the back of my mind on the chopping block because I don't reach for it organically, but maybe now I will because I really enjoyed using that palette last month. And lastly, for the first three palettes that I rolled in, is my Patrick Ta Major Dimension palette. I also wanted to mention that here is my Patrick Ta palette and I will say I am so close to hitting pan, probably won't be able to see it in here, but on the shade called Transition. I do really love this palette. I reach into it all the time for the mattes alone, but I also really love these two shimmers. And I did finish this palette on March 28th and it rolled out. So let's talk about the ones that I rolled in. Starting with 
a choice from my bestie here on YouTube, Angela, who is Curly Girl Angela G here on YouTube and everywhere else. She's always linked in my description box below, but I let her take the choice for the My Choice palette this last month. And she chose one, I think that she knew I was kind of rolling around in my brain and that is my Too Faced Sweet Peach palette. Definitely one of the oldest palettes in my collection, still remaining. I already had a pan in here. Not that the point <laughs> of this project is to hit pan and I didn't in this project, but I'm really glad to have this rolled in. It always makes me think of spring and it's just a nostalgic palette for me. It was my very first high-end palette. My husband took me to purchase it when it launched and I'm just really happy to have it and to be using it again. I actually do have this white shade even though I had already used it. I used it for an inner corner with the look that I have on today. So far I've used five shades in this palette. I will put up a graphic and show you which ones those are. I don't think I'll have any trouble having this one rolled out before next month and I'm just really glad to have this in the project. It always you know makes me feel happy and I absolutely do love that shade Luscious which I have are is one of the shades I've already used for a lid shade I believe I wore that to church on Easter Sunday the next palette that was rolled in randomly which I was very excited about is my Natasha Denona gold palette Again, this is one that I, for some reason, failed to reach for organically. So I'm really excited to have it in this project. I have quite a few Natasha Denona palettes. And so I'm really glad that they're starting to get rolled in because that is the point of all of this to make sure I touch every pan of eyeshadow in my collection. So the Sweet Peach was rolled in for the Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde on March 19th. And then the gold palette was rolled in for the Sultry palette on March 25th. And so far I have used four shades. I'll pop up the look I created. I've used these top four shades right here. And I really loved the look. It was so fun. I am so pleased to see that the quality of these shadows has not gone away with age. I've had this for quite a long time. It's been discontinued for quite a long time. I also have been putting up YouTube shorts with some of these looks that I've created. So make sure to check that out, including the look I have on today, which we'll get to. This is one of my very favorite shades. I believe it's called Varus. So I'm excited to use that. Shades that I'm a little eh, about having to use in this project are the shade Dijon here and then the shade Oro right here. I'm really not into these like yellowy gold shades at all. I have a lot of yellow in my skin naturally. I have a warm undertone but I do carry a lot of yellow in my skin and so I feel like when I wear really yellowy eyeshadows it almost makes me look sickly but you guys can be the judge next month when I share some of the looks I created and I hope that new Natasha Denona palettes continue to move and roll in. And then so I do have my single eyeshadows on my wheel for this project and as they've gotten rolled in and I had to roll in when I got ready to roll for my third palette which we'll get to in a moment but first two single eyeshadows came up. I know some people are doing like a three or five use goal on their singles. I just want to touch everything so once I've used them once, I'm rolling them out. When they come up naturally in the wheel, I will use them, but I will keep rolling until I get a third palette, if that makes sense. But the first one is this one right here, which is Sydney Grace Wildlife. It is a beautiful army green shade. And I used that one in combination. I don't have a picture of the look without my glasses on. The look that I did on Easter Sunday with the Sweet Peach palette for church, I did use this one as a pretty green liner. And so I have used that one. And then the second one is this one right here. This is Sydney Grace Mystery. 
It's a beautiful purple duochrome and it is the one I have on my lid today combined with the third palette that got rolled in, which we'll get to now. So both of those single shadows are rolling out and going back into my collection. And the third palette that finally got rolled in was my Danessa Myricks Groundwork palette which I love this palette. I have no bones about using this one. I will say I, I'm looking forward to at some point soon having a little bit more color within my three palettes that I'm working on at a time because this one's very neutral. The gold is pretty neutral. And let's be honest, the Too Faced Sweet Peach is predominantly neutral. However, I do have like my ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in a project. Now, so far I've used five shades. Again, I'll have the graphics up to show which shades I've already used this month. And I'm excited to use this. I love this palette. You have a pomade side and then you have a powder side. I did use this palette today. I used both of these shades and both of these shades for the mattes to go with that purple single from Sydney Grace. I love cycling through my palettes. I'm feeling really great about that. That's something that's always bugged me in the past that I didn't get through or use all of my palettes every year and now I am. So that is my update for No Pan Left Behind. But for now, let's roll on over to Project 10 Uses. So I'm doing the same thing with Project 10 Uses as I'm doing with No Pan Left Behind, and that is as I'm meeting goal on products, I'm rolling new things in. I do have a couple of new things to roll in this month. Uh, for next month, I'm going to try and have Tiny Decisions all set up on my iPad so I can roll live with you versus screen recording, but I film on my phone. My sort of unspoken goal for all of the products overall in my Project 10 uses was to use each thing at least once, and I got there except for two products, and we'll talk about those. But the first product is my Laura Mercier Color Infusion Blush in the shade Grapefruit. Absolutely stunning red blush. I didn't reach for this a lot, but I did use it once and hopefully I'll use it a couple of more times going into the next month. I think part of it too is depending on which palettes are in my No Pan Left Behind. If I have softer colors, things like that, I may not, you know, grab for this bright corally red shade, but I'm glad. I mean, it's one more use than it got last year, I'm pretty sure. Next, I have another Sydney Grace single. It is this one here, which is also a duochrome, and it is a blue shade, which I do really enjoy. This is a really pretty inner corner highlight or all over the lid as I'm wearing the purple one today. However, I did only use this one time in the last month, which meets my goals, but I would like to have at least up to five uses for the next update, if not be able to roll it out, just because again, I'm trying to cycle through things as much as I possibly can. One product that is ready to roll out and we will be rolling in something else for is my Lancome Tanti Doll Ultra Wear Foundation. The shade I used this time, I have two shades, is 300N. And I actually have found that like today, for example, maybe the reason I'm a little extra glowy though, just on camera, is that I found I really like mixing it with my Say Beauty Glowy Super Gel in the shade Star Glow. It kind of shears this out a little bit, makes it a little bit more glowy, and I really liked these two together. And I did hit my 10 use mark on this today. So we'll be rolling in something new for that, but I really enjoyed having that. It's one of my very favorite foundations in my collection. Next is my other single shadow from Sydney Grace in this project, which is the shade Golden Peach. If you can see, it's kind of similar to the Laura Mercier blush in Grapefruit, but I gotta admit guys, I don't think I'm ever gonna use this. I'm going to roll it out. I'm going to roll it out. I will find somebody to pass it on to or I'll franken it with something else to make a blush, something else. 
because I'm not going to use red on my eyes. I just never do. If I have reds in any of my palettes in my collection, that's going to be a struggle for me. But I have chosen to roll this out. I'm not going to keep it in this project. I always feel a little weird, like I'm breaking the rules or something like that. But ultimately, our projects should work for us. It's not about punishing yourself with your makeup. It's about cycling through it or having fun or um, pushing yourself outside your comfort zone with you know, certain shades and certain palettes or whatever. And so that one is going to roll out along with the Lancome foundation. So we'll roll for those two at the end. The next product that I did reach my goal on is my e.l.f. Glow Reviver Lip Oil in the shade Rose Envy. I absolutely adore this. In fact, I have it on my lips right now. I've already finished one of these oils in my deck of panning project and I easily got 10 uses on this one. The other thing that has already rolled out is my Milani Understatement Lip Liner in the shade Desert Rose. This is a really beautiful shade. It's kind of just like a, a nude pink or like a dusty rose. And I discovered too, I really don't have much of this product left, but I did use this 10 times. It has rolled out already. And I'm gonna be keeping this in mind for a project in future where I can just use it up and move it out. Next, I can't believe I've only used this one twice, but it is my Patrick Ta Blush Duo in the shade She's Baked, which is this one right here. But again, hopefully this following month with the palettes that I have rolled in for No Pan will help me to reach for this more because I love this formula and I love this shade. Out of the three shades in this palette, which all of these are sold as singles now and they don't sell the palette anymore. But um, this is my favorite one from this palette and hopefully next month I'll have more than two uses. And this project I feel like is a little blush heavy right now. So that's part of it. I only have two cheeks. <laughs> Alas, I only have two cheeks. Next, I had the Patrick Ta Shaping Wax in the clear shade. Number one, the wax is falling out of this here now. Um, I'm sure that's easily remedied. I just haven't tried. The goal was met that I used it 10 times. And I will say, I don't prefer the clearer version of this as much as I like the tinted version. My tinted version is almost gone. But in case you don't know how to use these, you just spritz a little. You can use water, you can use setting spray. I typically use setting spray and rub your spoolie in here and just comb through your brows. This works. I just prefer the tinted version. Next, I have this Complex Culture Blush Duo. It's the Good Glow Blush Duo. It looks like this. And I've used this one time. So I did meet my goal to use everything, to use this at least one time. I just don't feel like these colors are really seasonally relevant right now, but I'm still trying and it's staying in for at least another month. The one other product that I didn't use at all in the first month is my Colfi Beauty Mindy Moment blush. This is a beautiful blush. It is quite similar to some of the other products in this project. It is a beautiful corally blush and it even has a tiny shift of purple. I almost thought about trying it with my look today knowing I was going to do a purple eye look but I decided against it and I will just have to get use out of this in the next month. I do love this blush. It's beautiful. It applies beautifully and all those things. It's called Garling Glow if I didn't say that and you know, staying in for another month. So now we're down to the part where I started rolling things in for the three things that I had completed already. So the first thing that got rolled in is my ColourPop Super Shock Shadow, my one remaining Super Shock Shadow in the shade Sailor. Oh shit. Okay, well, she's not glued into the thing anymore, so I'll hold it like this. But it's kind of a beigey base with a aqua blue shift to it. I'll give you a swatch. Oh, I 
allegedly. Excuse my potty mouth. It's kind of hard to see in a swatch and this is getting older kind of right here. It is beautiful. I love it as a topper. I'm excited to use it in conjunction with the gold palette, the Danessa Myricks palette, and even this one, which I think is in my deck of panning, which is my Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize Cream Shadow. I think this as a base with Sailor over top will be beautiful. So, and I'm excited to get 10 more uses on this. I would love to hit pan in it if I could in 10 uses. We'll find out, but that one is rolled in and I have not yet used it. Next, funnily enough, another lip liner has rolled in as one has rolled out and it is the MAC lip liner in the shade Strip Down. And I do like this one. Sometimes I feel like it has a little bit of a, of a yellow undertone to it. And so it depends on what else is on my face and or what I want to pair with it, whether I like it or not. It's one that, I don't know, I shouldn't have just bought Sight Unseen when someone recommended it, but I do have it nonetheless. It's not a bad lip liner. I mean, it's a shade I'll use. However, I have used it three times since rolling it into this project. And then the last thing that I've already rolled in is my NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Concealer. I am glad this got rolled in. It is the concealer I have on today. I have it in vanilla. I wear vanilla in all of the NYX concealer formulas, but I have not used this like a whole lot or I haven't used it with any consistency to really form my opinions on it. So I'm excited to keep working with this. I have used it so far two times today and I think yesterday, but it's beautiful and I'm really enjoying this one. So that means the time has come for me to pop off screen and roll two new products in for the two that we are rolling out, which is the long comb and this red eyeshadow from Sydney Grace. All right, we are back and I have my two products. I got a lip product and an eyeliner, so this should be interesting. So first I rolled in my Maybelline Lifter Gloss in the shade Pearl. This is a beautiful gloss and very easy to use. I love it. It's basically a clear gloss, but it has like silvery and white sparkles to it. It's a nice little pop on the center of the lip with any lip look practically. So. I look forward to that and the eyeliner <laughs> that I got, very exciting, is my Wet n Wild Breakup Proof Waterproof Retractable Gel Liner and this is the shade Brick Brown. I had been looking for a burgundy eyeliner and I ended up getting this one off of Amazon and it's nice. It's definitely breakup proof. I mostly use this for tight lining with certain looks. It does stay in my upper waterline all day long. So that one shouldn't be too hard. And that is my update, uber long. Hopefully I'll cut out some of the fluff and I hope you guys enjoyed. If you haven't already, I would love to have you subscribe, join the family, join my recovery from being a booty guru. Let me know down below if you are doing this project and if so, how it's going. And if you're not doing this project, what do you think of the things that are currently in rotation for me? And with all that said, I hope you're having a great day so far and I will see you in my next one very, very soon. Bye.